The use of ultrasound may be helpful in identifying anatomy in cases of impalpable anterior neck anatomy. Its use is only advocated where it is immediately available, as is often the case in theatre, ED or ICU. It is important that it is switched on and functioning prior to the transition from upper airway to the front of the neck, and its planned use should not delay percutaneous emergency oxygenation attempts. In the wet lab, we have observed a marked increase in success rate at cannulating the airway using ultrasound in our impalpable anatomy emergency scenarios. We have also observed that real-time out-of-plane guidance as we initially planned was difficult and too time-consuming to recommend and have modified our technique to account for this. We recommend the following setup for using ultrasound in this scenario. Use a 3 to 15 megahertz linear probe. Have the scan depth preset at between 4 and 5 centimeters and have the screen positioned in an ergonomic location, usually opposite the user. The ultrasound machine is on, set at the correct depth and correctly positioned with a pre-prepared 14 gauge cannula and syringe. Apply ultrasound gel generously to the anterior neck. Pick the probe up with your dominant hand. Confirm probe orientation. Continuing to use your dominant hand, place the probe perpendicular to the skin at your best estimation of midline, giving a transverse section image of the neck structures. If the trachea is not visible, then slide laterally to each side of the midline to identify anatomy. When the trachea is identified, center it in the middle of the screen. Note the depth of the trachea and confirm absence of major vessels overlying it. Place the thumb and index finger of the non-dominant hand on the caudal face of the probe, either side of the midline of the probe. Carefully put down the probe and pick up the pre-prepared 14 gauge insight cannula and syringe with saline with your dominant hand. Proceed as per standard cannulation of the airway. In this example, the airway was only one and a half centimeters deep, allowing a shallow insertion angle of 45 degrees to be used. As can be seen here, the trachea is identified and positioned in the midline. Depth is noted and the space between the skin and trachea is cleared for major vessels. Here is the same technique from a different angle. Tilting the probe, as seen here, can aid in identifying tracheal rings. From this viewpoint, you can clearly see the positioning of the thumb and index finger either side of the midline of the probe. In a time-critical scenario, attempts to distinguish the cricothyroid membrane from the trachea are not recommended. If there is a poor image, ensure good contact between probe and skin. If the airway is not successfully cannulated on the first attempt, then move approximately half a centimetre laterally from the original insertion point and repeat as per our standard technique for cannula insertion in the impalpable anterior neck anatomy scenario. Similarly, you should limit your number to a maximum of three. You should also maintain the same cannula insertion angle on all attempts. If the trachea is at a depth of two and a half centimetres or deeper, as it is in this example, use an initial vertical angle of insertion as in standard impalpable anterior neck anatomy cannula insertion. Once aspiration of air is obtained, angulation and advancement is also performed.
As can be seen in this initial unsuccessful cannula attempt, it is important to withdraw the cannula as a unit prior to moving laterally. If after the maximum three attempts you have not located the airway, you must proceed to scalpel finger cannula. Using the previously identified midline, the vertical scalpel incision is now made knowing that there are no underlying major vessels.